Hey everyone, Nick DeRobertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today is the first lecture in our next lecture series on understanding complex results, digging into visualization. So the lecture today is an introduction to visualization, just generally talking about why we want to do visualization when it's useful and the overview of what it looks like in both Excel and Python. So we, when we think about visualization, uh, it's a way of getting understanding of more than one number at once. And in our models so far, we've just had one main output. Uh, thinking about the salary model, the dynamic salary retirement model that we've built out, we've had the number of years to retirement as our main output from the model. But we've also had salaries over time and wealth over time as outputs, but each of those represents a lot of different numbers. And so it's a little bit difficult to just, uh, only with the numbers, present that in a way that someone can very easily understand what it looks like over time at a quick glance. So that's where visualization becomes useful, is any time where you have multiple different numbers that you want to show some kind of summarization of that information and you want it to be in a much more digestible format. And these visualizations can be very powerful for getting very quick understanding of complex uh, results. So you know they say a picture is worth a thousand words and it definitely is true. Uh, in the context of visual, visualizing our results. You know, humans are just really bad in general at looking at a bunch of numbers and making some kind of interpretation out of it. That's something that machines are very good at, but humans are bad at. And so humans, we're visual creatures, and so we have to display our data in a visual way that makes sense to a human. So thinking about the, the way that we have our results so far, uh, in Excel, we have something like this, which shows our salaries and wealths over time in a tabular format. So that is kind of the more basic form of visualization is just to lay the numbers out in a table. You already get more context than just displaying the numbers, at least they're laid out in a structured way. And we can see you know, the salaries and wealths together, they're aligned by the time. So that already helps substantially in understanding what's going on here with the numbers. We had this in Excel, basically, because you're always kind of working in tables in Excel, but we didn't even get to a table format in Python yet. In Python, we've just been printing out sentences, which say, you know, at year three, you would have $63,000 as a salary. And so we haven't had a good way of displaying this information in Python yet. So looking at this table, I mean, certainly you can look at it and get some conclusions from it. Uh, you know, you can see looking at the salaries, okay, it's increasing a little bit year by year. And then when we hit year five, we have this jump here, that jump representing a raise from a promotion uh, versus the cost of living raises that come every other year so you can definitely see that but it takes some time looking at the numbers to understand that you can't just immediately glance at this and understand okay every five years the, the there's a promotion the salary is going to jump for the promotion you can see that if you just look at the numbers one by one and identify these patterns but it's not immediately obvious just looking at the numbers and that's where visualization can be really helpful and we'll see examples of what this looks like visualized. So when we think about how to visualize things in Excel, I mentioned that we're already working in tables. We probably already have our numbers laid out in this kind of format. So that's already going down the, the tabular direction of visualizing data. So we have that in place. Then what we can add on top of that is charts and graphs. And so in Excel, that really all lives in one spot. You just go and hit insert chart and you pop into this kind of menu here and you just look through the different possible charts for your data 
and select the one that is appropriate. And that's pretty much the end all be all of Excel visualization. There's a, quite a bit of customization that you can do within the charts, but everything kind of lives within this insert chart and then modifying the chart that it generates. In Python, things are not so straightforward. There are a lot of options for how to visualize things in Python. And that's because Python is an open source language which is developed by the community. Millions of people across the world uh, are out there building different solutions for how to visualize. Anyone can go and create a new way to visualize things in Python, and so many people have done that. And so you have all these different packages and all these different ecosystems of how to visualize things in Python that have different advantages and disadvantages. And the vast majority of this is definitely outside the scope of this class. You know, we could spend an entire semester just looking at visualization in Python. Uh, but we're trying to teach financial modeling here, so we're going to take what is easy and can get us quickly to some reasonable charts and graphs and just kind of recognize that these other options are out there and you can expand into using them, but you don't have to do that. You can get pretty good results with just what we're focusing on this class, which is going to be using Pandas and Matplotlib for our visualizations. But there are a lot of other cool things you can do. A number of these out here um, are solving some interesting problems and presenting data in new and interesting ways, such as interactive plots where you can actually like zoom in to the plot and maybe hover over points and it will show you more information about the point and other kinds of interactive features. Uh, they're very, very cool and very interesting ways to think about visualizing data that have a lot of advantages but we're not going to dig into all that in this course. I would recommend you to take a look at uh, some of those things outside this course, such as Bokeh and, and hollow views are uh, two of the ones that um, I've used for interactive uh, plots and they're very useful, um, but we're just gonna focus on Penis and Matplotlib in this class. And why are we focusing there? So matplotlib is, it was kind of one of the first uh, ways to visualize data in Python and a lot has been built around matplotlib as kind of a basic system for producing charts and graphs. Um, and matplotlib is going to kind of be in the background for us. Really, we're gonna use pandas to directly generate the plots and graphs. Uh, whereas Pandas actually uses matplotlib under the hood, we generally don't need to think about that very much. Most of the time we're just using Pandas. But I do mention here that it's all based on matplotlib because matplotlib is extremely customizable and you can do all the same customizations on your Pandas plots as you can with matplotlib. So basically pandas is gonna be our really simple way of just quickly creating some kind of graph to show off our data. And then if you need to do absolutely anything with customizing it, then you can go to using matplotlib to make those adjustments. Uh, so most of the time you're not gonna to need to really think about matplotlib, but if you wanna customize your graph in some way, then you can just Google about how to do that in matplotlib and you'll be able to apply that to your pandas plot. So that's the overview of financial modeling visualization and how we're gonna focus in this course. We'll come back next time to go through an example of doing visualization in Excel. So thanks for listening and see you next time.